This is Elm Brown from Atlanta Hawks. Keep it locked to True School Sports with Brandon Taylor. Hey, Harold. Straight. Right here. Congratulations. Uh, that was impressive. Uh, my question for you is, you know, as Greg said about Pacquiao, one thing that Lou said after the fight was not only does he believe that you would beat Pacquiao and basically every other welterweight out there, he said Mayweather ain't coming back out of retirement to fight this guy. And not only does he think that you are already one of the very top welterweights, but one of the top guys pound for pound even perhaps after this type of performance and uh, looking at your potential. So on the scale of, some people still consider you a prospect coming into the fight. Other people, like Lou, now saw what you just did to Algeria, think that you're you know, right on top of the sport. Where do you think you are in relation to That's a pretty wide array of stuff, but how do you think you stack up in, the, in, in, that, in that landscape? I think I'm in the mix with everybody. Um, I'm in the mix, I think I'm in the top five. I'm in there with Lisa Kelbrook and Keith Thurman, Sean Porter, uh, Danny Garcia and the rest of those guys, I'm right there. And um, I'm the number one mandatory for Kel Brook, so hopefully we can get that in real soon. I was going to ask you how, how quickly, and do you, well, put it like this, do you think that your next fight can be for one of the world titles, whether it's against Kel Brook or one of the other uh, champions that, uh, that that are involved with PBC and Al Heyman? Um, it could be, but um, if it's not, hopefully later on in the year I get to fight Kel Brook. But, I have to talk with my team, and um, you know I'm in no rush. Right over here, uh, given given that this is a year when a lot of welterweights are in action, we started out with Kel Brook, Danny Garcia winning, Je Jesse Vargas, obviously Pacquiao, Bradley, and those guys, and now this follows up with Thurman and, and Porter. How much does this performance, Lou, any of you guys can answer, change the narrative for that fight and every other fight? I mean, this is right in the middle. You make this statement, you don't even have a title. Now you answer too. <laughs> I mean, first of all, I don't think Kel Brook even want one piece of this. I mean, honestly, and um, I, I was like, I'll be honest, I was a little shocked tonight. I mean, I, I thought he was going to win. I, 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 I mean, I sort of like, I have great respect for Chris. You know, and I know Chris very well for since a kid. I mean, and, and, and uh, you know, and kid, Chris, like Chris is given, but like, Chris has never gotten steamrolled. I mean, no one's ever run through him like that, ever. You know, um, is there anyone, anyone in this room thinks that would be a prohibitive favorite over him? Anyone? Anyone? I don't think there's anyone. That's pretty amazing for, for you know. I remember when, when he came out of the Olympics and Al signed all these, like, Olympians. And, like, I'll be honest, I, this is the truth. I called Al and I said, I don't think about much of, like, most of the Olympians. But this one kid is pretty awesome. And I thought that when he was an amateur. But the progression he's made as a pro. And, and and the poise. And you know what too, like he's another thing I love. The guy's humble. I mean he's not he's not a like very like talkative, crazily like lo like loquacious guy. He doesn't like waste words, you know? But you also just heard him say the the truth. He don't he ain't afraid of anybody. You're gonna no one you're gonna put in front of him that he's gonna think he can't be. And after what you just saw, there's no one in the room. I know this. There's no one in this room who doesn't know enough about boxing that they know that this man is live, not live, this man has a potential to be anyone in the world today. Anyone. And then he can answer the question.